welcome to East by West Farms. Here we grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Today I'm going to do some transplanting. Here we had uh, a few trees, like uh, some grapes, Concord grape, and uh, red bud trees that I like, and uh, um, a, a two pair of two blueberries, and the, the Russian mulberry trees that I bought in October. Another thing I'm going to do is dig up some of the plants that have been growing in this uh, property. So I have some bamboo, like I would really like to establish, establish a colony in the uh, farm. And also some uh, hearty choke, uh, sun choke uh, that has been growing in here, but uh, the uh, space here is too small for it. These are two um, Concord grapes that I bought last uh, uh, October. So, um, I'm not sure. They haven't leafy out, leaf out yet, so that's a good time to transplant them. So this one, I broke it uh, when I had uh, my, my sharpshoot fell on it. Um, the branch looks pretty dry, so I'm not sure it take, uh, it's still alive or not. Uh, this one, so far, I haven't seen any sign of life. The idea of getting this plant in October is that they were, because we have a relatively mild winter, um, they might still grow some roots during the fall and the winter. So I want to take a relatively large root ball with it. Okay, so this one seems to be, definitely the root has been growing actually, because uh, um, when I got it, it didn't have a whole lot of roots. So now you can see, I actually have a quite long root over here. So it might have grown somewhat, that's a good sign. I still want to be cautious, so I put it in the five gallon pots and I filled it up with uh, mulch to keep the roots from drying out. So I have cleaned it out, this area, and uh, what I'm going to do is to put the grape cuttings or the, the grape tree down here. So the soil here is pretty good. Um, I probably don't need to do any amendment. And I'm just going to put the tree down and let it grow. The final step, of course, is water it so that uh, make sure that to basically compact the soil around the root to drive out the air pocket. So you want to have quite dense water that is thick and then it will drain out. So now that um, the water have all seeped underground and uh, I'm going to bring some mulch in. It 
and place it around it. Kind of form a donut, so that way it create a kind of a valley that this micro environment is good for the trees to establish roots, roots, and then uh, leaf out from there. One of the things that uh, I really want to grow are the bamboo. It's a fast growing plant. It can grow like several feet. Uh, per day. It's a very good building material. You can use it for fences or trellis. You can even build, use it to build houses and all that. And then we can harvest the bamboo shoots. Just thinking of the fresh bamboo shoots to make my mouth watering. What we have here actually are the bamboo that actually my neighbor planted. They have the, not the timber bamboo, but the smaller one. And it's escaped to our site. We have been trying to connect to within this area by the fence of the neighbor. One concern, of course, is the run, runner bamboo that could damage the foundation. I grew up seeing bamboo all over the place. It's part of my life. What I'm going to do is to dig this one out and uh, put it in a tray and then take to the farm. Then I can uh, start a plantation. So this might be a little bit hard to dig. Whoa. And the root system is very robust. That's why it's such a, a aggressive uh, plant. So it may be a little bit difficult to dig. I think it's called a riser of the bamboo. Oh man. Need to be a big one. On the other side.
So that's the riser of the bamboo. You can see that this already start to have a bamboo shoots and that will grow to become a new bamboo. And this, it grows, the riser grows underground and uh, it's, it increases words that's like a steel wire. So this one, not sure if still alive or not. Uh, I just keep it because if it's alive, it will shoot up new shoots. The sharpshooter usually can cut roots pretty well, but uh, for the bamboo riser, the sharpshooter is not useful. Yeah, I think this one is still alive. That one is the the shoots that will start. These are all dead. All right, so I got this one out. This will grow like wheat, better than wheat. That's it, the other one. Mm, may still alive, and uh, Another thing I will transplant to the farm is the Jerusalem sunchoke. And we had uh, bought some uh, of this uh, from the farmer's market and have been planted over here. So it's been here for several years. I actually like the, this plant because it has uh, beautiful flowers and also, of course the tuber is also edible, but uh, it didn't flower over here. So I wonder is because there's not enough sun or some whatever reason. So I'm going to take some of this tuber into the farm and plant it over there and see whether I will get nice flower uh, to enjoy as well. The interesting seems to be the tuber is only on the top surface. And this thing is, once you get it, um, just a small piece like this will uh, sprout and then um, grow and give you another patch. So I'm, don't, I'm not worried that I dig them all out and then there will be nothing left over here because it, it will grow. You, you can never get rid of it. Yeah, they're not very big over here, so must the soil here somehow they don't like it. Supposedly they can grow in very bad soil. Basically, the soil that nothing grows, they will grow. They grow very well here. Um, they can grow taller than me, but uh, never flowers. And the, the tuber um, are not huge. Doesn't look like they're very deep. 
So maybe a small troll will work just fine. That's another one. A small one. I leave it here. The nice thing with uh, the sun choke is that you can, at least in Texas, you can leave it over winter and uh, dig it um, whenever you need it. So they will keep pretty plump, you can see, in, in winter. And uh, it's a smaller ones that start to sprouting and so so that's uh, kind of an emergency food also if you want you can leave it here and don't worry about it I never fertilize them I really just kind of has been ignore them just put them down and uh, let them grow and All right, so I got a handful. Another thing I want to transplant is some wild native Texas fruit trees. Here I'm at a city park that is pretty much uncultivated. It has a biking trail along a creek. I noticed that there are some wild Texas grape wine growing by the creek. What I wanted to do is get some cuttings from these grape wines and then plant it by the creek in the farm. Since it's native, it should be adaptive to this weather over here. These are the grape ones that are not lifted out yet, so that's perfect for getting cuttings. I get a handful of uh, grape cuttings. They look very dry. Looking at the end, look like they are green, so they should root once I give them enough moist and stick it into the ground. This tree over here is a Texas white mulberry. We got some mulberry once, uh, one year. They are not bad. It's a native plant and they just grow here without much care. What I'm going to do is to cut some of the lower branches off and uh, trying to root it and see if I will get native white mulberry from these cuttings. Just by cutting the lower branches, I got quite a few cuttings. It's pretty green already. They should root. Hopefully we'll get a few mulberry trees. So that's what I got today. Uh, some native Texas grape and uh, some native Texas mulberry. I hope you enjoyed this content. Judging by the daily here, spring is here. So I hope you enjoy your spring garden as well. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below. If you have not done so, please follow our journey with